Good day, everyone. How's it going? So today, I'm going to be taking a look at Spoon's video on the James Lindsay versus Sargon Tiff. Tiff, as he puts it, I think that frames it well. It escalated. Um, so the point about looking at this video, as the name suggests, the name of the video suggests, is patterns of behavior. We're going to be looking at how Spoon is analyzing this interaction. I have not pre-watched this. I, I usually do that um, in order to kind of decide whether or not the video is even worth covering. But I figure, especially considering yesterday's interaction with Spoon, that it would be interesting to... Um, yeah, just to, to cover more of his content, to look at how he is doing his analysis and more examples of his analysis can we be fair can we see value in it i have my doubts honestly i really do but we but but maybe i'll be surprised and that'll be its own worth all right so without further ado let's Start playing the video. All right. Ooh, this video. This video should prove to be a bit of a challenge. A tiff between James Lindsay and Sargon. To okay, so just to get... um my perspective out there before any analysis by spoon how i see the situation is that james lindsay had the position the um he had knowledge and well let me rephrase that the facts were on his side however he didn't have access to all those facts he didn't have everything correlated or um everything gathered together and he also behaved quite badly on twitter sargon on the other hand did not have the facts in his favor had he has bad analysis but he behaved quite good during these interactions and so that's my basic kind of analysis of that situation on twitter um i've covered the topic in general earlier but okay and so um i've done gaming with this uh, just to address maybe an elephant in the room is i have i usually don't use this avatar unless i'm gaming or i'm on thinkers so maybe people who are consumers of other uh, um more of the political nature of my content haven't seen this avatar before um but yeah, I just, I don't know. I felt like I interacted with Spoon using this avatar and I wanted to maintain some kind of consistency with with that thread. So that's why this is this way, in case you're wondering. Okay, if you're not, if you're new, then yeah, I switched between using a kind of a PNG and using this avatar. Um, anyways, there's a whole there's a whole story there. You can... Either look it up or not care or whatever. So, um, back to the video, though. Let's see how Spoon handles all of this drama. Oh, lovely. I I, I pre-downloaded this video, so this wouldn't be Names, I'm sure that need whatever. no introduction. So, Sargon, English liberal, and James Lindsay, who uh, blew up the... He is... Not a liberal. Sargon is, d does not get that title. I mean, he... Yeah, okay. But that's just... That's my perspective. Uh, I have well-reasoned that, or um, documented that on my channel, but you know, let's not hold that against Spoon because he doesn't have my analysis. Uh, he had made this weeks ago before we ever talked, so... Um... And he still might even disagree with me. And that's his prerogative. 
oh my gosh, the internet sphere for his anti woke academic perspectives. And whilst he calls himself liberal, if you scratch below the surface, yeah, he's really just woke light. A perspective he doesn't like oh. at all because, well, liberal. Well, no, no, no. Um. Well, okay. So, I yeah, I I think think this messaging is completely off. I think that what what do you call it? What Spoon likes is. Okay, Spoon has described the right as simply an absence of the left, right? But that's that is not only super vague and unhelpful, but completely inaccurate. Is that people have beliefs, and then they that sets them in certain places, right? A, a person who is a libertarian, right? could be right-leaning or left-leaning depending on exactly well yeah it, it's a whole can of worms to untangle that but the point is is that you're not just being a libertarian does not mean you are simply absent of anything right you you have to believe in a set of prescriptions a, a worldview um being a, a monarchist is is a set of prescriptions. Um, being on the right is not simply just absent of the left. It's it's yeah. So Jane, to bring this back to James Lindsay, James Lindsay has a set of prescriptions that are consistent with liberal values. In Spoon seems to call James Lindley woke light because he doesn't like liberalism. He thinks that liberalism, well, he seems to. We'll see. All right, let's keep going. Liberalism is his pet project, and when someone points out it's doomed to produce the very thing he supposedly rallies against, yeah, he tends to react very, very badly to that. The man is utterly incapable of taking any criticism, especially from the right. Why anyone thinks he's a dissident figure is frankly beyond me. We have to potentially discuss political theory, so I have to make this interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay, so uh, what is it? Spoon himself described as being someone who has not thought that hard about this, or at least about liberalism specifically when, when, uh, when I brought it up. So Let's let's hear let's hear it. Oh my gosh! Interesting, and I bore you guys and myself as I go through all of this. So, uh, oh goody, what great joy! Now, what kicked all of this off? Simple. Or McIntyre, a man I suspect James Lindsay would never face off with in a million years because Orn would wipe the floor with him. And yes, I'm aware my bias is projecting harder than a military parade on the Fourth of July, but don't worry. Yeah. No, I mean, good on him, but. I mean, it seems like he, it, this is what those, uh, what do you, this is what you would call lampshading. Sorry, I, I keep looking at the video over here. So my, my avatars will, should probably switch this. So the stream is over here. And the video is here. So I can be mostly looking at the video. So the video or, so in media, we have, uh, what do you call it, lampshading, right? And it's where you bring up a problem and br you, th what is that? Bringing up the problem is addressing it, right? So you haven't, you haven't actually done anything about it. You've simply like covered, you know, like, uh, what is it? Instead of really shining a light, you've simply, like, covered it a little bit. Um, so an example would be, like, if some character did something crazy, and then, and then a, instead of, oh, a, a, no, not just crazy, out of character. Some, a, 
a character does something that they wouldn't normally do, and there's no seemingly reason for it, right? And another character calls it out, and then the show simply moves on normally. Calling it out doesn't actually fix anything, and that's why it's called... That's what is normally called lamb shading, right? So to bring it to Spoon, Spoon seems to be lamp shading his projection, right? His bias. And so let's see if he actually meaningfully takes it into account or if he just leans into it. Because if he's just leaning into it, if he just acknowledges it and then lets it go, then that is lamp shading. Sorry, I was do bring my receipts. So Orrin McIntyre said this. Okay, so he feels like his so to reiterate there, he feels like even though he has a bias for this person, he feels like the evidence will support its his conclusion. DEI is in some crazy form of communism, though its proponents are often neo-Marxist. Okay. This is not true. This is this here is an acknowledge. What is it? It is a confusion between um, the leftist and liberal values. There is a distinct difference between the two. And once you understand what the two, how the two differ, then you can easily distinguish. You can easily easily distinguish one set of prescriptions from another is that if okay a a good example of this right just real quick is the what do you call it the the public square okay so everyone having access equal access to the public square of of like goods and services and such being able to access it is what was being fought for in civil rights, a, an end to discrimination, an end to segregation. However, DEI, you know, did diversity, equity, and inclusion, right, makes it so that we have to adjust, go further than simply allowing everyone into the public square we have to correct and it's in the e the equity right equity is the equal equality of outcome right so you have to look at the end and make sure things are equal not just make sure that or equality of process e or equality of of um opportunity is the is the counter to this it is what do you call it? Um, it is, you're just making sure that everyone has the same kind of, um, everyone can access the same systems, the same federal systems equally, right? If you have the money to do something, you are able to access it. If you are in the place to access something, and it's it, and it's public then you can access it it doesn't take into account um it's one of the misconceptions about equality of opportunity you don't need to make sure everyone has the same beginning it just means that when you're in the process then uh then you're everyone is treated the same after you get in, everyone is treated the same. And whatever outcome that comes out of that is based off of your own personal performance. The And there's luck obviously involved, but obviously we're trying to account for luck, at least somewhat. So, so back to DEI. DEI, though, would say that we need to give preferential 
uh, preferential treatment to people of certain backgrounds, of certain identities in the public square. They need a leg up. They need help. They need better. And they, we need to modify the process in order to get better outcomes for certain people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blah, blah. Spoons. Yeah. Yeah. So. So DEI actually is anti-liberal by definition. And it isn't coming from the right. So it's got to be coming from the leftists. So it is, it is some form of leftism, whether or not you're, you really want to argue it's communism or Marxism or whatever. That kind of distinction is unimportant. The point is it's illiberal. It's from the left. This DEI is the natural evolution of civil rights law. That's why it was able to take hold so easily. And until you are willing to unwind that Levi. No, okay. No. So again, the, okay. So the, what is it? The interaction between leftism and uh, liberalism is that liberalism is against oppression, right? Especially economic oppression by elites and such, like by a king and by nobility and such, that people should have the right for prosperity. Okay. And leftism, though, sees that everything in society or what they are after is harm reduction often. Okay. And so these things can seem similar to people who don't know the difference. But again, if you are aware of everything I said before, then you can identify when things cross the line, when things go from liberal to illiberal. And again, yeah, so it is not the natural evolution. It is an infection of leftism. Viathan, this is the world you will live in. Needless to say, Sargon agreeing with this, even extending, saying communism isn't separate from liberalism, though, James did not take too well to that, even going so far as to pox Sargon, with Carl saying the following, I consider this an open admission that James can't substantiate his argument. I have never once insulted James. In fact, I have defended him many times. In our discussion, I pointed out that many people are often emotionally attached to liberalism in an unhealthy way. Seems relevant. But personally, I find Harry Robinson from the Lotus Eater summation of the scuffle the best one, both amusing and succinct. Carl respectfully disagrees with James Lindsay. James, and I took that personally. What a clown you are. Liberals always side with communists when put... So, Spoon really isn't here into, um, what is it, adding his own kind of commentary. That's why I haven't paused it and why I'm letting all this go through here. It's because I feel like I've sort of front-loaded a lot of my commentary on this. I think, Jay, was it? Carl made bad arguments and James made a bad response to those bad arguments is the TLDR from my perspective. Push comes to shove. This was motivated by Orrin McIntyre pointing out correctly that DEI is an extension of the Civil Rights Act and Lindsay starts throwing pissy fits over his... Yeah, again... You, if if you don't know, then you don't know. But it's this is incorrect. Sacred cow being criticized, fundamentally unserious. Men like Lindsay have no solutions to our problems. He is a snake oil salesman who wants to sell you a complicated, fancy explanation of wokeness as French post-constructional fetish theory, while ignoring the legal and social framework that powers woke. Ignore. Um. What is it? Post French? Was it? Yeah, French post constructional. 
I don't know, fed the fetish theory. Obviously, it's very joke part of that, but it's not entirely wrong. Is that uh, the French Revolution did breed it was caused by? I feel um, the social contract. Um, I feel like the social contract though was accepted is because was it the intellectual movement in europe at the time was moving in that direction people looked at the social contract because they were it spoke to what they were already feeling sort of it gave kind of form to the thoughts and feelings that they were already having and so the french revolution happened was it a few years later after the um, social contract was published and I don't think that's coincidence I think that um, Rousseau is the author of a lot he's like the proto-leftist honestly and so you really need to understand the genealogy of leftism and it, and its thinkers to kind of understand where we are at currently and the problems we are having currently. So, I mean, it's, it's not a, and just because someone doesn't have the answers doesn't mean that they don't have valuable information. Okay. Locke didn't solve, Locke didn't create America that was our founding fathers. It happened, you know, over a hundred years later. And yet so much of our political theory that was codified into law during that time is from Locke, right? So even though he didn't have answers he had a theory of how things should work and he didn't and he inspired people who did make answers so we we don't all have to ha know exactly what to do sorry Th this is this is becoming not less about spoon and more about the original topic but that's fine that's fine we will i will keep my comments about Spoon on point when they come up. Da, 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 da. Let's see again. Okay. You can call, uh, call things a liberal clear enough. Um, um, I think that, what is it? I think we call things illiberal because for two reasons. One, like, let me just pop this up. Um, I think that we call things illiberal because they are, you know, it's, yeah, that's enough. Um, but yeah, I think we call things a liberal because the left is so squirrely about what is and isn't their thing, right? And so we only, so we can only default to clearly determining that it isn't liberalism. That's why we call things illiberal. I feel. Um, but. But there are things on the right that are also illiberal, right? So it this is why I have taken to not simply saying illiberal, you know, the illiberal left, right? Leftist. Because there is a was it I don't know if there's anything currently in existence that I would classify as on the left and illiberal that isn't leftist, but I suppose it could happen and we need and when that pops up we would need to have a term for it but that's uh, an argument for another day a good an explanation as any as to why i call him moke light so bravo to harry i tip my hat to you good sir now why is sargon saying this well naturally this is the american perspective of liberalism so the lockean form which inspired america's constitutional framework is at play here. So Sargon did a good well, at least he knows that much. Breakdown some years back called Five False Assumptions of Liberty. Okay, and I've broken down this. It's very interesting. 
all five of these things come from one essay by Locke, or sorry, by Locke, one essay by Rousseau that doesn't even appear in the rest of Rousseau's work. And, and very distinctly does not appear in any of Hobbes or Locke's work. It's just Rousseau. Okay. It isn't, it isn't a foundation. It isn't assumption of liberalism, especially when you realize that Rousseau is the proto leftist. He is not a liberal. All the liberal proto liberal thinkers were concerned with private property and natural rights. Rousseau was concerned with natural rights. However, he thought that private property was part of the problem. Sounds very leftist. It's no coincidence that the, that the, um, what is it? The essay on the origins of inequality can form so neatly to how leftists describe the world. It's, yeah, so Spoon has fallen for this rhetoric too. Liberalism. I won't get too much into him here because I want to keep this video as bare bone as I can, but his five points are as follows. Free social man in a state of nature, everyone is equal, the universal man, the blank slate, and equality of I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm so frustrated. You just yeah. opportunity. It's a good read. Sargon's a quality writer, and I find his words to be more proficient when it's put to paper. So I'll put a link to it down below. But the conversation gets a bit more interesting when V comes in, saying the following. Also, Sargon, if you want to get purely philosophical, the state of nature, as mentioned by John Locke, includes property. As such, communism is antithetical to this definition, as it must remove that property, often by harming the person as well as its liberty, should they refuse. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So I said before, I was critical of Sargon, and I took V's position, so now let's flip the script, and I'll side with Sargon this time around. Also, you will notice... I tend to avoid labels in my own videos for precisely this reason, because when people use labels, they tend to do away with its capacity to get contorted. More often than not, they apply it with rigidity, the latter of which never makes any sense to me because it's rarely ever absolute. It's always more fle flexible. Okay, because so this is true. However, this is the problem, right? Is that this is how... This this fluidity is how and what is it? The fluidity and non recognition of the big origins of liberalism is how we got into this mess in the first place. Is that liberals have this concept of individual rights and we're all going after prosperity and we're all anti oppression. Um, and so when people are making advancements in the way of liberalism, they are, uh, um, making these kinds of, uh, arguments in, in using these kinds of things, using these kinds of, these specific, not just these kinds of things, these specific characteristics, individual rights, anti-oppression prosperity and so leftists though they are not concerned with those things they are certainly anti-oppression uh, but they take that to the extreme and they actually do believe in some ways they do believe that there should be oppression Okay, it's just that who is being oppressed? Okay, they actually believe that the majority, what is it? 
This isn't necessarily universal, but they believe that the majority should be oppressed because they are privileged. And so uh, minorities need to be elevated. And because their principle, uh, principle of left, a, a core principle of leftism is equity, the equality of outcome. So, and they see that private property is a problem. Okay. But the thing is, is that, so, so these two groups are incompatible on a core level. But when you are, you know, fluid, when you are non-rigid, when you're just like, well, let's just try to get the best outcome. Let's, let's try to not oppress people. Let's try to help people with their prosperity, right? These, th these arguments here are convincing to a liberal. And so this is how the leftists sneak in. So while he is correct, he is also highlighting the problem. As you're dealing with the opinions and perspectives of other human beings. And more often than not, the conversation tends to spiral off and people end up arguing more about the definitions and effects and effectiveness. And I get very bored and fall asleep rather easily. I don't think V is entirely wrong. He's on the right track, yeah, yeah. but he comes off yeah, tad inconsistent. See, 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 this is the kind of thing that is important. You know, Michael Moll said um, that America has never been a liberal democracy because the founding fathers didn't use the word liberal democracy. And the thing is, is that I think the term liberalism came later, right? So they obviously wouldn't use the term liberal democracy. Um, I mean, they describe things how they describe them definitions do change, right? But the point I'm trying to make, right? And I believe the point that is being evaded by Michael Knowles is that we're trying to describe the same ideas, okay? What's important isn't the words. What's important is the ideas. And we're all describing the same thing when we're talking about liberal democracy with in the context of the founding fathers because uh, because of their center around Locke very frustrating system maybe I do believe he's got all the right ingredients though everyone seems to have a valid point so let's see if I can bridge the gap here now, V fires off a series of tweets. I've picked the most applicable ones. Hopefully, I don't do my friend a disservice by uh, posting them in a timely manner. Communism is a reaction to religion. It is a reaction to human greed, a reaction to the concept of aristocracy, a reaction to war. Like, if you read the manifesto, you would see it can be used as a reaction to almost everything because it's a solution for every problem. It is a very simplistic way to say that communism is a reaction to liberalism. It doesn't need liberalism, nor is it a reaction to it. My country was a monarchy, and we got communism. Take into account that in China or Soviet Russia, you didn't have a free society, and yet you got communism. Communism as an ideology doesn't care about the political ruling of the nation-state. It creates a revolution and overthrows the order. Precisely correct. Um, what is it? The, yeah. I don't know if patterns of behavior, what what's on display here is my pattern of behavior. Um, but this is absolutely correct by V. Uh, communism is a, may have been influenced, right, by other political theories. But it is not like a evolution of one particular political theory. And it can pop up wherever all you need it to be is all you need to have communism is a, a, a are the people who find it and believe in it and then try to make it a reality you don't need it to it come from 
uh, liberalism. It, it, if this kind of genealogical thing is correct, then the, as I've mentioned before, the post in, in previous videos, not, not today, in post liberalism, you would have to make it a, a Marxist invention. It would have to be that it can only could be conceptualized as a evolution of Marxism. That it isn't actually post liberal, right? It is only post liberal in the sense that it wants to defeat liberalism. It would be actually a post Marxist philosophy because it is coming from the Marxist tradition and changing things from that point as its foundation. Now, I think that that's not too far off, but to assert that is the absolute truth would be dishonest. Order. Seems a bit strange to say my country was a monarchy and we got communism, but also say communism as an ideology doesn't care about the political rulings of the nation state. Now keep in mind... Oh my gosh. Wow. You know, missing... That is... I, I, you know what? I wonder if that's going to be a pattern of behavior of Spoon. Okay? It's super easy to understand what V is saying. He's saying that modern, that communism doesn't evolve from what was it? It's not like, what is it? It's not like a tree that has to grow from a sapling, right? So, so you only have like, you only have a specific or, or what is it? You know, like a, um, like a moth, oh, like a moth comes from a caterpillar, right? It, it, it um, and only you only get a moth if you have a caterpillar, or you know a specific type. Obviously, you can get butterflies, but I mean, the specific specific types of uh, caterpillars will only produce moths, right? You can't get a butterfly or something even far different from those specific caterpillars, and. What V is saying here is that is not the situation being um, with communism. Communism doesn't have to originate from a liberal country and then change into a, a communist country. Is that you can have communism come from a monarchy. That's the point he's trying. You do if it it doesn't need liberalism, nor is it a reaction to it. So S Spoon is clearly missing the point. He's so let's let's go back just to hear Spoon Sp just to hear Spoon make this incorrect analysis state it creates a revolution and overthrows the order seems a bit strange to say my country was a monarchy and we got communism but also say communism as an ideology doesn't care about the political rulings of the nation state you're 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 i don't know accidentally or or on purpose misunderstanding i'm not going to make the determination considering v's your friend i'm i'm almost i'm certain it's on accident but obviously you're misunderstanding. Now keep in mind, this entire ordeal kicked off about liberalism leading to communism. It's happening in the West right now. We are not monarchical, unfortunately. And as V pointed out, it happened under monarchical rule as well. They both appear to be right, so logically there must be some underlying variable that encompasses both of their views. Now in order to solve this problem, I'm going to attempt to do away with communism's uh, underpinnings and just debunk why it's nonsensical bollocks in under 60 seconds, a TLDR, if you will. Communists believe in a classless society, equality above all else. Let's be real, class is basically synonymous with hierarchy. We're mammals, and hierarchy is natural. 
So ultimately, they want something that is utterly unnatural and antithetical to not only all of human history, but also nature, because nothing in nature is ever equal. And in order to... It depends on your definition of words. I mean, obviously, I'm going to be sympathetic to this. I mean, it's the foundation of liberalism as well. Um, liberalism is arguing for a base sort of equality and not an equality of outcome. It is arguing for an equality of process, an equality of opportunity. Uh, and you, based off of an ethical system that operates with the understanding of all of these presuppositions. To make something equal, you need something to force the equality, which would obviously require a power above everyone else imposing its will, and therefore violates the having no class idealism upon which communism is supposedly based on. So to sum up, their utopian vision is sheer lunacy, an impossible mess of a pipe dream. Well, I mean, I would say that it is, but you do need to do more work than what um, Spoon has just done here, okay? You need to actually go through why, you know, why it doesn't work. You can't just say, oh, this doesn't conform to reality and therefore it's not going to work because you know houses structures right don't conform to reality we bend reality we work within reality obviously but but we bend reality to our will all the time right we fight gravity when we build airplanes when we when we uh build spaceships we we fight against you know, we work with but fight against the laws of nature all the time. OK, so you could do the same thing, theoretically, with a system of government that works with but fights against the uh, or works with nature, but fights against certain oppressive forces like like gravity in the case of science, but like with um, hierarchy in the case of communism now i think that there are multiple ways that this is doomed to failure but spoon here is very content on on not doing the work and very content on just making assertions so is it any surprise why it's always resulted in death and decay no not really so with that information let's bridge the gap here shall we because v actually pointed it out it creates a revolution and overthrows the order. Hierarchy is order. And as he said, it doesn't care about the political rulings of the nation state. And if you know leftism, its primary driver is envy, wanting something that someone else has, aka possessing of. Yeah, um, that is probably, what is it? The, it, to put it in the, uh, what is it? The moral foundation theory framework, it's probably the cheating fairness foundation where they feel like because thing was it because people have started out in a privileged position that it's not fair that they have more right but this again is a misunderstanding it, it, it comes from a place of jealousy of envy as spoon said so yeah that People, they, they want what they don't have, and they find ways to justify their actions. A form of power. Look at that list you had up there a moment ago. Communism is a reaction to religion, to human greed, to the concept of aristocracy, a reaction to war. What do all four of those things have in common? They're all forms of power. The power to impose morality, the power to create or take capital, the power to influence, and the power to mobilize men and declare the legitimacy of an armed conflict. If you have the power to do any of that, you have a hierarchy. And you will have this in any and all societies because we are hierarchical by nature. That will come into being in any society, just from a structural perspective. The monarchical one has the peasants, the merchants, the knights, the lords, the clergy, the princes, and the kings. Our oligarchical one still has the peasantry or...
okay. citizens, as we're called now, but the business owners, the military, celebrities, members of parliament, congressmen, CEOs, and of course, the most evil people on earth, bankers. Every society has its elite. It just depends on its criteria. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper, this is why. Well, elite. Okay. I would disagree with the term elite. Um, I could you. What is it? We could use the term descriptively, but I don't think that you are um, using the term as a like as a caste, right? That a caste system is really quite accurate. I think that um, people are born into privilege. I mean, it's just frustrating because they don't. People who believe in this aristocracy class caste system uh, believe that people, they don't realize that um, people's wealth and people's positions in societies are always changing. The, there are people, certainly, certain groups of people that, that stay at the top and their families stay at the top for a long period of time. But that isn't, that's done through hard work and they are the exceptions. Um, and maybe they are exploiting the system unfairly, but the rest of us, uh, the, everybody just kind of like ends up churning or every society ends up churning the, the elites. Everyone, like everyone gets their 15 minutes essentially, but, but not quite everyone, obviously. The point is, is that it's always changing. Meritocracy is complete BS. And if you've just realized, wait, doesn't that mean the emergence of this type of revolt is a present danger in any society? Indeed, because it's ultimately nothing more than revolt. That um, yeah, darling, I would say that this tends to, yeah, that because liberalism has a focus on prosperity that it favors meritocratic hierarchies over dominance hierarchies. I think that's uh, well said. Against mammalian reality. It's why you have to be completely insane to believe any of this kind of rubbish. But I want to pull up a response to Sargon's five false assumptions of liberalism by Helen Pluckrose. She is the... Oh, okay, so... Helen Pluckrose doesn't know the, um, I've gone over this before, I believe. Helen Pluckrose, well, yeah, sorry. Let me state that again. I've gone over this before, but we'll do it again. Helen Pluckrose doesn't know Locke and the original thinkers, uh, or doesn't know the Enlightenment thinkers' body of works. If she did, she'd be able to identify the same kind of things that I am able to identify and very easily points out that her version of liberalism doesn't include the five false assumptions of liberalism. And I would say the reason for that is because they aren't in liberalism. They're done by Rousseau, which is the proto-liberal or proto-leftist the co-author of James Lindsay's book, Cynical Theories. We'll look at some of it in just a few moments. This is what she said in response to Sargon. Pre-social man in a state of nature. No idea what this means. I'm not familiar with these philosophers apart from Hobbes. Sargon's list of philosophers include Grotius, Locke, Hobbes, Rousseau, and Montesquieu. And yet the only one she's familiar with is Hobbes. You're a liberal expert here, people. Imagine calling yourself a liberal scholar and you've never read Locke. That's like... I know. I, I find it very... I, I will agree with Spoon here. You can't be a liberal scholar and not have read Locke. Is the foundation... The, the corest American found... Uh, I would say, yeah. The most foundational person for liberalism. Everyone should read Locke. In fact, we should, what we should do, so, well, and who knows, maybe I'll even be one of the people who tries it, is to update Locke 
into modern vernacular and phrase like not try to repre represent Locke accurately as he was or as like not just a like a, a translation but like a new work that is based on Locke that represents Locke's ideas in modern vernacular in my own words my own work so yeah calling yourself a builder but you've never heard or seen bricks and mortar in any sane society this should instantly disqualify you from ever engaging in this topic because you're hopelessly out of your depth by the way she got more in the comment section for pointing all this out two everyone is equal this is a claim my word woman learned to proofread the liberals believe that hierarchy is not natural to humans and always a construct of power they're both without which everybody would do equally well. No, some leftists think like this, but meritocracy is the guiding principle in liberalism. Now watch how fast. Okay, no, so it's really important. I don't know what Spoon is about to say, but it's really important. Helen Pluckrose, even though she hasn't read Locke, is attuned to the fact that this is a leftist idea. It is not a liberal idea. She 180s this into a ditch. Liberals oppose hierarchies like class systems, patriarchy. No, no, no. It is important to note that liberals are against oppression, that people have a right to prosperity. So they oppose hierarchies that cause, you know, they are opposed to hierarchies that cause oppression or racial segregation but not people attending leadership positions through merit i want you all to pause and recognize the colossal amount of sheer stupidity in that statement I okay so again what we have here is spoon just not getting it he didn't get v somehow mysteriously because he can't read apparently but Right here, again, liberals oppose oppression. And th even though Helen Pluckrose hasn't written it, she is describing it. Okay? The point is, you know, class systems, patriarchy, uh, racial segregation, these are pointing out oppression. That was the point. But not people attaining leadership through positions of merit. Again, not against hierarchy, against oppression. And Spoon just doesn't get it, even when it's spelled out for him. I actually can't believe anyone is daft enough to say that out loud. Attain leadership positions through merit. The military forces, if you went by merit, would be only men. Yet an institution of oppressive patriarchy by your liberal frame. Nature is not fair, but society is still best served by having people who are best at things lead those things. I'll never make a rugby player, thank God for that. We can't make everybody equally gifted at everything. No shit. All we can do is one. Well, okay, I'm actually kind of confused here. Is he even is he even more brain dead than I thought he was? Because she's saying that the whole equality thing equality of outcome and just making sure everyone can do everything is not a, a liberal principle that's leftist she's on the side of meritocracy that you're pointing out what are you complaining about you got you got this with in other aspects from other people earlier why is it so difficult now On ensure that nobody is held back from rising to the top on their own merits, changing systems so that women and people of racial minority can go to universities and enter professions where liberal developments, and two, ensure that people who end up at the bottom in a meritocratic society have a decent standard of living and fulfilling work. So we want the best person, hooray for meritocracy, until it. Okay, okay, my bad. Let me apologize to, to Spoon here. He was simply reading 
d this part down here. I didn't. I thought he was spouting his own thing. Thank, thank goodness, right? That he does realize, or um, uh, yeah, this is Helen Pluckrose that he was pointing out. He what? Gosh, I wish he had been a little bit more clear that he was reading. And um, I guess I guess that's on me, is what he would say. So yeah, again, I apologize. So we'll see what he has to say. Let me pull that back just a tiny bit. Fuck. So we want the best person. Hooray for meritocracy. Until it produces disparities that we don't like, in which case we'll just go for a change in the system. No, that's that's the leftist. That's exactly what she said she didn't want. Why are you ignoring her words? <sighs> if you think this is bad, we're going to make it even worse. This is from their book, a section called Principled Opposition Example 1. We affirm that racism remains a problem in society and... Generally, this can be observed. There are people who may... There are people on in on the left and on the right who make racist claims about stuff. Um... From a liberal perspective, right? Liberals, or let me rephrase that, sorry. Leftists don't think that they're being, that their views are racist. They think that they are being, they think that their position on race is the correct one. And then they adopt the word racist and racism in order to point out the liberal perspective as being racist. So, I mean, they're inherently incompatible. Okay. Um, I obviously favor the liberal perspective and that is what's being affirmed here. And so we've got uh, racists on the left and we've got racists on the right. And it's not great. needs to be addressed. We deny that critical race theory and intersectionality provide the most useful tools to do so, since we believe that racial issues are best solved through the most rigorous analysis possible. We contend that racism is defined as prejudiced attitudes and discriminatory behavior against individuals or groups on the grounds of race and can be successfully addressed as such. We deny that racism is hard-baked into society via discourses that it is unavoidable and present in every interaction to be discovered and called out, and that this is part of a ubiquitous systemic problem that is everywhere, always, and all pervasive. We deny that the best way to deal with racism is by restoring social significance to racial categories and radically heighten their salience. We contend that each individual can choose not to hold racist views and should be expected to do so. You have a choice, but not really because you're expected not to. By who? And why? And what exactly is my penalty if I don't? I hope you all realize the concept of self-preservation doesn't exist in their worldview. The racism is declining over time and becoming rarer. That we can and should see one another as humans first and members of a certain race second. That issues of race are best dealt with by being honest about racialized experiences while still working towards shared goals and a common vision, and that the principle of not discriminating by race should be universally upheld. Okay, and where's the lie? What's wrong? What's wrong here? What do you got? <clears throat> Cynical theories how activist scholarships made everything about race, gender, and identity. Be honest, does any of this sound like opposition to you at all i think this is just oh my gosh opposition to yes opposition to leftist ideology left they're denying all of the left uh, a ton of leftist positions there it's oppositional to that no no, it doesn't, because they aren't opposition. Like I said, they aren't anti-woke. They're just woke oh life. Oh, my a revolt gosh. Against there's, there's no definition. There's no... Gosh. 
Okay. You define your terms and then you point out when you see it. I've seen none of that so far. Just assertion this is woke light. How? Reality. And these people want to revolt against just enough reality to fit their ideological worldview. But they have absolutely no clue how to turn off the spigot and keep it from going into overdrive. And oh my into gosh. This is clearly coming from a place of ignorance by Spoon. Just, just does not understand the Enlightenment. Just does not understand. The poison form they claim to rally against. These people are so desperate to use whatever means they can to hide the nakedly obvious and avoid conversations about observable reality. Sorry, I just yeah. because it makes them very, <laughs> very uncomfortable and sweat bullets. sweat bullets. Any rational person will tell you the more guess, advanced the oh civilization becomes, yeah, oh, the like, more the dis what was it? More of this lol no you. I hate this so much. It's like everyone's just like what use it, what is it? Using that emoji, the uh the Wojak um crying. Was it like smug face a um, mask with the crying guy um, seething, coping, molding, whatever you want to say, underneath? Um, and everyone's just saying, ha, that's you. It's like, come on, better argument. That, yeah, that's got to be a big man. Spoon bingo. With the Wojaks, maybe that's the way to go. Sheesh. Disparities between the lagging groups will show. Everyone knows if you went full blown colorblind mode, which two demographics would dominate society? And these types would scramble like rats if you pressed them on Y and then. Okay, okay. So the. <laughs> uh, well, okay. There you go. I. I... <laughs> bloody well know it. It's funny that James thinks Sargon is wrong, yet his own writings prove Sargon is right on the freaking money. One oh my gosh, okay, so, okay, so he... what you're tracking there is leftism. Yeah, we're all against leftists. The problem is leftists. Sargon's five false assumptions is all about leftism. It has nothing to do with liberalism. You're just wrong, and ignorant of it, too. It's laughable, honestly. He absolutely hates Christianity with a passion. So I'll quote I have for you all from Cortez. There are only two possible forms of control, one internal and the other external, religious control and political control. They are of such a nature that when the religious barometer rises, the barometer of political control falls. And likewise, when the religious barometer falls, the political barometer, that is political control and tyranny, rises. That is the law of humanity, a law of history. If civilized man falls into disbelief and immorality, the way is prepared for some gigantic and colossal tyrant, universal and immense. Do okay. I believe that what's happening there is that he is tracking something. I do not trust that he is being completely accurate. I think that he is noticing a trend of a kind. But that is not a law of the universe. It's not a law of his of of mankind, right? He may be, he may be noticing a trend that can that how do you say it? The it conforms to reality to a certain extent, right? But these are in places of like, okay, when you have a lack of morality, then you can get certain outcomes, right? The morality doesn't need to come from the church, right? Um, and is, I mean, 
This is a highly complex conversation. Let me just say, Spoon is just not, he's simplifying it, dumbing it down. And and it's not even something that uh, James Lindsay would necessarily argue against. If you were to have a fully nuanced conversation that wasn't going to cause people to become debate-brained. To accompany this, I'll leave you all with the following from Aristophanes on Twitter. The thing about liberals, which Lindsay almost certainly is, is that they are pants-shittingly afraid of any collective group that has convictions. They will switch sides constantly and play the middleman because their only conviction is that they should be in charge. Historically speaking, this worldview always gets shoved in the eventuality. They believe in some kind of divine mandate of their leadership because they mistake being moderate for being nuanced and enlightened. The problem with this is with... You know, this is really, really poorly observed. This is, this is so, so biased. So massively. I mean... Liberals were the ones that founded America. Liberalism is one is the way that um, has dominated the liberal hegemony. They call it, you know, has dominated the world stage for almost uh, for almost a hundred years. It it's absurd that you know that to say that liberals are just you know, cowardly middleman who will side with the most number of people because they are so desperate to stay in charge. I, it's such a, it's such a biased and not a low resolution way of looking at the world. Without convictions, there are no real priorities or goals for governance. This void of action makes conditions deteriorate and leads to graft and corruption filling that void. The one thing they excel at is acting as a fulcrum that pits both sides of the... You know what? I'm done. You know, there's nothing of more of value here. Um, I'm over an hour. I was just going to basically do an hour and then head on out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, <laughs> let me just... Uh, what was over here? Nope, that did not work. There. There. Thanks, everyone. Um, hopefully, anyone who watches this in the future finds it useful. What can I say? No, not impressed. Not impressed. All right. Have a good day, everyone.